So in this video we're going to work on fixing a switch which does not boot up. So as you can see here what's happened is let's say an eBay seller has wiped the switch completely but doesn't realise that doing that actually um, makes it not boot. You can see the error right here, no such file or directory and it's just gone to a switch colon prompt. Obviously you can't really configure anything here, it's unable to boot. It needs a ORS put on it basically, IRS that is. So in the description there will be a link to both my website where you can download the IRS images and I think Cisco offer the IP base image for free without with just an account sign up required. So I'll leave both links in the description. But I'm going to be using a Cisco 3560 which means I can only do IRS 12 but that is not the end of the world. So when you download that you're going to get it and it's going to have a .bin file in there it's also going to have a HTML file and if you put that HTML folder onto the switch as well and you set up your switch correctly it will actually have a web interface which is quite nice um, it's not a very useful web interface but it's there but we're not going to be doing that so let's minimize this for a bit and let's go back to TerraTerm so we're using TerraTerm instead of PuTTY for this video simply because TerraTerm could do the serial communication that we need to do today. I know that you can do it with Putty if you use certain add-ons, but it's just easier just to download TerraTerm for this one thing. So the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to change the board rate. Now the reason you're going to want to do this is because if you leave it at the default 9600 bits per second, it's going to take about three hours to download a 13 meg file. Now obviously that's not really ideal um, we want this done as quick as possible so we're going to do set board 11 5200 when you do that it will go kind of weird in TerraTerm you're going to want to go up to setup you're going to want to go to serial port and change it to be the same 11 5200 if you press enter a few times you can see we're back we're connected so once you've changed your board rate to 115200 and you've verified that you have communication still, you need to start the file copy. So we're going to do copy x modem colon to flash colon and then we're going to put the name of the of the dot bin file that you just downloaded. So here's the file here, we're going to just steal the name of that like so and we're going to right click to paste it in there like so. It's going to say begin the X modem transfer now and you're going to go up to file here and in here you're going to go transfer X modem send. You're then going to select that dot bin file that you downloaded. So this is going to take a little bit of time, um, usually about 20 minutes but maybe a bit more, maybe a bit less. It doesn't have an estimated time which is a bit annoying but you can see it's going through there reasonably quickly. So I guess I'll start the video back up once it's finished. Okay, so as you can see the file has successfully copied. We can do a dir flash colon here and we can see the bin file is on the switch. So we're now going to do the same set board but we're going to set it back to 9600 here and the reason we're doing this is because if you don't change it then it will be very annoying because it will be different every other product pretty much 9600 is the default just set it back to that after you've done your copy and we're then going to to we're then going to type boot flash colon and then the name of that file like so and as you can see the switch is now going to actually load that bin file it's going to boot up into it hopefully It's actually just upgraded the bootloader actually. That's probably because I've upgraded to a slightly newer firmware. So if you get this, you might have to do the same boot flash colon command upon restart. Let's just have a look and see what happens here. Yeah, see, it didn't boot up again after a restart simply because we haven't finished doing it. But oh, I think it just automatically found the file there. So 
I guess it has some sort of fail back there to find the like the only bin file but we are going to configure it so that it actually tries to boot that file first instead of the old one which is obviously wrong there as you can see it's a totally different version if you read that error message there and here we go we're booting up again and this time it's not going to do the upgrade which is good So as you can see it's now saying press return to get started and as you can see it's gone to a like initial configuration wizard we've got to say no to that and that's simply because I did actually wipe the entire switch config as well um, but you probably will not have that if you've somehow corrupted the firmware on an existing switch you won't get that so we're then going to do EN to get into enable mode conf T and then we'll go to type it was, yeah it's just figured out that it's got a network cable plugged in uh, we're going to type no boot system and that will remove the existing config to boot the old file then go type boot system flash colon and then we're going to paste that bin file name again and there we go we can now exit that and that's the switch fixed now we haven't covered everything here, we haven't covered putting the web interface on or anything. We might do that in another video, it's not terribly useful to be honest, so I'm not going to cover it in this exact video, but the switch will now boot up correctly when you pull out the plug and everything. It will be hunky-dory and you can then configure your switch with all your VLANs and everything. So that's it for this video, be sure to check out some of my other videos, I've got a lot of videos on networking and stuff. I've got a whole series that I'm working on at the moment on Cisco Call Manager, which is a pretty decent series. I think it's going pretty well so far. And I thought I'd make this video just because someone asked for me to do a video about how to recover a switch with no firmware. So there you go. See you in the next video.